I personally believe Le Mans is the greatest motor race in the world and it's always been not just a personal ambition of mine but one of Aston Martin to come back and try and win it outright and um, to do that of course we need a specially built car, we need a special chassis, we need our own engine and that is what we're announcing today. We are coming back to Le Mans with an Aston Martin designed and built chassis with an Aston Martin designed and built engine under the new 2011 regulations. What people didn't know on that day, this was about to become the biggest failure in Le Mans history. But let's start at the beginning. The British race car specialist ProDrive built a great reputation with their Ferrari 550 GTS Maranello, a car for the GT1 Endurance class which was very popular and successful between 2001 and 2005. The British brand Aston Martin wanted to re-enter sports car racing as well and they founded Aston Martin Racing in 2004, a joint venture between Aston Martin and ProDrive. Technical director was again, just like at the Ferrari project, George Howard Chappelle. So ProDrive turned the Aston Martin DB9 road car with a 6 liter V12 engine into a proper race car, the Aston Martin DBR9. But although it was a full works effort, Aston Martin ran this on a limited budget and they sold cars to customers to reduce costs. But ProDrive had the experience of the Ferrari and the Aston Martin had a similar layout. So the DBR9 turned into a race winner and fan favorite. It could win the GT1 class in its first race, the 12 hours of Sebring in 2005. It went on to win drivers and constructors titles in the following years and even won the GT1 category twice in Le Mans. So for the 2009 season, the 50th anniversary of Aston Martin's win at the 24 hours of Le Mans, Aston Martin Racing wanted more. Now they wanted to compete in the top class, the LMP1 prototype class. That also meant they would compete with the Audi and Peugeot works team, but again on a much smaller budget. So they were looking for a cost efficient way in. The Czech private team Charus was already using a Lola DB8 with the 6 liter V12 Aston Martin engine in 2008 in the LMP1 class. So for 2009 the idea was to use the same car, but to change the bodywork to something that looks a bit more like Aston Martin. So again, ProDrive did these changes and created the Lola Aston Martin DBR12. Because the engine was based on a production car, they could run with a larger restrictor. And since Peugeot and Audi used diesel engines, the Aston Martin became the best petrol car. It was the dream of the fans with its nice looking bodywork in golf colors and with a screaming V12. Because Peugeot and Audi didn't run in all races of the Le Mans prototype series, Aston Martin was in a very good spot for good results. So they won their first race with the new car and could win the LMP1 championship in the first year. Just in Le Mans, they couldn't match Peugeot or Audi. So overall, for what they invested, things for Aston Martin and ProDrive went really well. And they saw the rule change for the 2011 season, which limited engine size, as a chance to take things a step further. So the decision was made to build their own LMP1 prototype from scratch. ProDrive will design chassis and even the engine. Audi brought their R18 with V6 engine, Peugeot the 908 with V8, both diesel, and Aston Martin decided for a petrol engine. Of course, because they're only selling petrol road cars. Maximum capacity for turbocharged petrol engines was 2 liter. So ProDrive decided for a 2 liter inline 6 cylinder engine, which had the advantage that the design is similar to one bank of the previous V12 engine. But if you want to get close to 600 horsepower from a 2 liter engine, you need a lot of boost and that means stress for the engine. At the same time, an inline 6 cylinder engine is almost as long as a V12, but due to its slim shape has very little torsional stiffness. And the slim shape is not needed because the Le Mans prototype chassis needs to be designed as a two seater anyway. So they needed to add additional tubes to increase torsional stiffness, and the engine wasn't a fully stressed member. Characteristic for an inline race engine is also that inlet is on one side and exhaust on the other side. Since the Aston had one turbocharger, it was sitting on the right hand side next to the exhaust primaries. So the single exhaust was on the right hand side as well. Because the turbocharger was on the right hand side, also the engine's air inlet was on the right. They packaged a small water radiator and a small intercooler in front of the turbocharger. 
so the right side pod was very packed. The left side pod, however, was very empty. Because regulators wanted to slow down cars and hence reduced engine power, efficient aerodynamics became more important. So the focus was on lower drag. ProDrive decided to go for an open car instead of a closed cockpit like Audi and Peugeot. That way, they didn't need to design a windscreen, viper and so on. But they had to live with higher drag. So they decided to use flow through the car to reduce drag. And again, to save cost, they developed the car with CFD to save wind tunnel runs. The monocoque is a Le Mans typical two-seater design, which is optimized for low drag. They chose a high nose with a keel and two supports underneath, which looks a bit weird. But although the outside shape of the car was pretty conventional, the internal ducting was not. You can already see that by the number of intakes. First of all, they had a massive duct underneath the cockpit to use the air that went through the front diffuser. The outer part is vented at the side, the inner part guides air through the whole car and exits just before the rear suspension underneath the bodywork, so this air would exit at the back. The large side intakes are also split. The outside part feeds the front brakes, the inner part feeds the side radiator. And the additional upper intake, which gets some boundary layer, contributes to that. At the side we have the engine air inlet and in the center is another scoop into the shark fin. It looks like this scoop is guiding air through the exhaust primary area. And at the back they included two outlets in the shark fin to vent more air from the engine compartment. So in terms of cooling and aerodynamics it's a pretty complex design, also by today's standards. And then after the first runs of the car they updated the right side pod package. They changed the routing of the exhaust, added a wastegate pipe, were quickly cutting holes in the bodywork for that and increased the intercooler size significantly, which is now laying above the turbocharger. So the ProDrive engineers developed and built the car, including engine, on a tight budget in the impossible time of six months until the first test. And the result of that was that the car wasn't nearly finished. Despite of the use of extensive CFD, another factor of building the AMR1 in short time with a low budget was 3D printing. So before new parts were cast, molded or laid up, they already existed as a 3D printed part. Aston Martin entered one car in the International Le Mans Cup with the option for a second car for Le Mans. Of course, if you can hardly finish one car until the start of the season, you try to finish another car until Le Mans in summer. They missed the first race of the Cup the 12 hours of Sebring. The first showing of the car, the 6 hours of Le Castellet, was disappointing. It was basically the first big test for the car. The AMR1 was slow and unreliable. It finished 88 laps behind the leader and was not classified. Two weeks later, the second car was ready and both came to the official Le Mans test. The performance was poor again. One engine failed within a couple of laps. So, they turned the second engine down to around 300 horsepower and it lasted only a further 20 laps before it also failed. Back home, ProDrive realized that the cylinder liners had failed. New ones wouldn't come in time for the 1000 km of Spa. So they cancelled Spa and the following race was already the 24 hours of Le Mans. As Martin still had a good fan base there and no one expected the new LMP1 car to win. But what followed was a disaster. People were joking that the team trucks did more mileage on their way to Le Mans than the AMR1 had been tested. In qualifying, the two Aston Martins only reached 22nd and 25th place. They lost so much time on the straights due to their open design and detuned engine that they were slower than most of the LMP2 cars. After quali, the team found cracks in the aluminium pulley of the belt drive on both engines. They worked out that to survive the 24 hour race, the pulleys would have to be changed four times per car. The other solution was to quickly make new steel ones. They could only shortly test the steel pulleys during warm up right before the race. But the steel parts had an increased weight and introduced vibrations, maybe a result of the hasty production. And that had even worse consequences for the engines. The first engine failed at the start of lap three of the 24 hour race. They replaced the pulley on the second engine again, but it was too late. Damage had already been done and it failed after completing just four laps. 
The whole program turned out to be a huge embarrassment for ProDrive and Aston Martin. They started an internal investigation to analyze the poor performance, but didn't find a fundamental mistake in the design of the car. The biggest problem of this project was the super short development time on a very low budget. And that for the top category of Le Mans. Now, the team couldn't afford more poor performances and stopped the AMR1 project, because there was also a high risk of losing their sponsors. The AMR1 was never raced again. The two cars were sold to private collectors and the remaining two monocoques were used in other projects. One for the legendary Nissan Delta Wing, which needed a two-seater monocoque for Le Mans after being designed as a single-seater. And the other one was used for the Pescarolo 03. It was coupled with a Jet V8 and was 8 seconds faster than the AMR1 in Le Mans. But also here, budget and preparation was limited and so their driver, Jean-Christophe Bouillon, withdrew from the race as he didn't feel safe in the car. So also this car didn't finish the 24 hours of Le Mans. Aston Martin, however, used the Lola DBR12 of the previous year for the remainder of the season and then concentrated on GT racing again. They didn't touch Le Mans' top category ever since. Technical director George Howard Chappelle left ProDrive and later joined Multimatic, where he was overseeing the Ford GT program. So, I hope you enjoyed this look back in history and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member if you want to support this channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.